Happy April 18th, the official date of new rules for EV tax credits. As you know, we've been waiting for the secretary to release their guidance that would then allow us to understand which vehicles do and do not qualify for the new $7,500 tax credit. As you know, at this point, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 was passed last year and it included new rules for vehicles to qualify for this up to $7,500. At the end of the day, starting today, that $7,500 is now broken into two pieces, $3,750 for critical minerals and $3,750 for component requirements. Now, of course, there are new rules in place as a part of the $7,500 tax credit. Real quick though, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe. Starting August 17th through December 31st of 2022, the electric vehicles now have to be made in North America. There's still that 200,000 vehicle cap in place, but the old battery size requirements are being used. So there were 19 models that were qualified from August 17th till the end of the year last year. Those included vehicles like the Nissan Leaf, the Lucid Air, Mercedes-Benz EQS, ID4, Audi Q5, Rivian R1T, Rivian R1S. Now the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y did not qualify still from August 17th till the end of the year of 2022. I've seen a couple of you reach out and say that, hey, I got this credit while filing my taxes with my CPA. I've got some very bad news for you. You're going to have to amend your tax return or the IRS is probably gonna come after you for that $7,500. The Tesla Model 3, the Tesla Model Y, the Chevy Bolt, they were not qualified in 2022. That 200,000 vehicle cap was in place. I cannot stress that enough. I'm kind of alarmed seeing a few of you reach out and try to tell people you do qualify, you do not qualify if you bought your Tesla in 2022. Now, starting at the beginning of the year, on January 1st, 2023, we have some new rules that came into effect. It still needed to be assembled in North America, but the 200,000 vehicle cap was removed. It still had the old battery requirements, but we did have now MSRP caps and income caps. So basically, if it's a van, truck, or SUV, it has to be $80,000 or less. And if it's anything else, you have a $55,000 MSRP cap. For income, $150,000 for individuals, $300,000 for joint filers. Once these new rules became in effect on the first, 24 models now qualified. The Genesis GV70 did start qualifying at the beginning of the year. The Bolt and Bolt EUV were both also qualified. And of course, the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y were also qualified. In addition, the Lucid Air was removed from the list as was the Mercedes-Benz EQS. Now, April 18th, moving forward, we now have new rules and 17 vehicles are now qualified for the $7,500 tax credit. The new rules add the battery critical mineral requirement and the component requirement for those batteries. Because of that, we have 11 vehicles that do qualify for the full $7,500 tax credit. There are seven vehicles that only qualify for half, which does include the Model 3 standard range. Although the Model 3 long range is not specifically listed on the EPA's website, we have some assumptions around both price and it qualifying for the full tax credit. It's not available for order, but it will be returning and it's likely due to Project Highland, which is of course the refresh project for the Model 3. Taking this list, removing all the cars that no longer qualify, there's some very interesting takeaways. Taking a look at this, Chevy has the number one, two, three, four, and six position for the lowest effective cost of an electric car, and this is assuming that your income qualifies. So if you get one of those vehicles and the MSRP is under the caps and your income qualifies, those five vehicles are some of the cheapest electric vehicles you can get. Now remember, this year, you're not gonna get that tax credit until the end of the year when you file your taxes. Starting January 1st of 2024, you will get that tax credit at time of purchase. So it will actually come off the price of the car at time of purchase starting in 2024. Another really interesting thing over on Tesla, the long range Model 3, of course, is not available to order, however, Based on the pricing structure that we know today, and we believe the long range is priced at, 
it would be about $3,250 difference between the standard range and the long range. And that's versus a $7,000 price difference. And that's because the standard range only gets half the credit. So it really starts to paint a picture of what we should anticipate moving forward for the Model 3. The Model 3 has been going down in price this year, and I would expect to see some pretty substantial structural changes in pricing for the Model 3 as we move forward. The long range Model 3 is not likely to return if there's only a $3,000 price difference between the standard range and the long range. And if it's only a thousand dollars difference between that and the Model Y all wheel drive. Another very interesting takeaway from this, when we look at the Mach-E and the Model Y, after this tax credit, again, assuming you qualify for all of it, there's about a $250 difference between the two cars. The pricing war between Ford and Tesla on these two cars has been cutthroat. And although Ford has been increasing prices where they can, the Mach-E has been under a lot more pressure to lower prices. So it's basically priced exactly the same as a Model Y, and that's going to be probably the same situation moving forward. Now, that is at a much lower MSRP, but because it only qualifies for half of the tax credit, it makes it about the same price. The F-150 Lightning has gone through some pretty substantial increases. And as we look at this list, it is indeed the most expensive fully electric vehicle on this list. There are some plug-in hybrids here as well, but of full electric vehicles, the F-150 Lightning is the most expensive base vehicle that you can purchase today, even including a full $7,500 tax credit. On the flip side, number four overall is the Silverado EV. Now, of course, these are not out in the public yet, but it's the cheapest truck on the list. And until we see pricing from Tesla about the Cybertruck, I would not anticipate expecting too many changes to this list just yet. You can guarantee that both Ford and General Motors are waiting just as anxiously as we are for the pricing of the Cybertruck. Once that is released, depending on where it lands, we will see either prices pushed further down or we'll start to see them level out and maybe even increase. So only time will tell if Ford is gonna to continue to increase prices on the F-150 Lightning or if they're going to have to start cutting prices again. Looking at this list, there are quite a few differences between the beginning of last year, the end of last year, the beginning of this year, and now. There have been so many changes to which vehicles qualify, which do not, and it has created a lot of confusion, understandably so. The only things that are gonna change moving forward is if a manufacturer makes changes to how they make an electric vehicle. So some vehicles that are not on this list today could come back if there are enough changes made to battery components that go into that vehicle. In addition, every year, the requirements go up by 10%. So there are some vehicles on this list that could fall off of this list starting at the next year. So this list will have to be maintained and updated by manufacturers and reported to the secretary, which then will be updated here on fueleconomy.gov. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, of course, give it the thumbs up. If you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel as we continue to post content regularly. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.